You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's a big world out there, and you're just looking for a pat on the back or head. You run around the city, searching for a place to bark, working your tail off with your nose to the ground, sniffing for a few scraps, hoping someone will throw you a bone. You take each lead, collar after collar, hoping one day to take a bite out of success and become the top dog. Fortunately, you come home each day to open arms, open cans, a drink waiting for you, and a comfortable place in front of a TV set. You know you've got it good, really good, because after all, it's a doggy dog world out there. Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with your host, pet expert and award-winning author, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Hi, welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, and with me today are my good friends, Petra Burke. Hello. And Kate Abbott. I do. And as Kate just said a moment ago, I'm glad you tuned in because it's time to make some magic. <laughs> <laughs> As Petra wilts in her chair. (laughs) No, we're not Disneyland, but we're almost as much fun. Showtime! (laughs) Today we're going to talk about the issue that we've actually run into more recently than we have in the past, and that's of people getting two puppies from the same litter. Although it sounds good, it's really potentially a lot of problems. So, hang on, stay tuned for our sponsors, we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. The Boo Boo Loon Pet Recovery Collar is an innovative inflatable product that comfortably restricts pets from harming most surgical wounds, skin disorders, and obsessive licking or scratching. It's the humane alternative to the hard plastic cone and other devices. The Boo Boo Loon is easy to use and designed to be soft, fully adjustable, and pillow-like, allowing for unrestricted vision and complete freedom of movement. Sizes range from extra small to extra large. So join the Boo Boo Lution. Become a Boo Boo Buddy on Facebook or check out BooBooLoon.com. B-O-O-B-O-O-L-O-O-N.com. At Petco, we really love pets. There isn't anything we won't do to make sure they're getting the best products and the best care. So when you ask us a question like, So how do you feel about cat condos? We can say from experience, Feels like home. For her. Enter the code DOGGY, D-O-G-G-Y, and save 10% on orders of $65 or more, plus free shipping at Petco.com. Hi, this is Tim Link, host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Join me as we feature interviews with best-selling pet-related authors, award-winning writers, journalists, and bloggers. And we'll tell stories about the animals and interesting topics about the animals in our lives. Each of the interviews will give you a first-hand knowledge about why the authors and writers chose a particular story, what the feature animals meant to them, and what has become of those animals that we've talked about. And of course, I'll also share stories from my own books, blogs, articles, and experiences. So be sure to join me and the writers and authors on Animal Rights. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. On the outside, I guess the idea of getting two puppies at the same time sounds like a good thing. I mean, we have people come to our puppy class or our basic obedience class, and they say things like, well, we're really busy, so we got two puppies so they can keep each other company. We've had people say, oh, well, I was at the breeder and was only planning on getting one, and the breeder talked me into the second one. Or they were at a shelter looking at a puppy, and the shelter volunteer said, Well, nobody wants this one, and you know what happens if he doesn't get adopted. Or we need to keep them together. Oh, we need to keep them together, yes. They've been through so much already. Yes, it's good to keep them together. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of reasons why people get two at the same time. 
we don't recommend it at all, ever, no matter what the excuse. And there's a lot of reasons why. You know, we've talked about this subject, and I've talked with people in class, and I just, I just had a flash of my past. We did it when I was in high school. We got two puppies because my mother worked, my dad worked. We went to school, so we said, oh, we'll get two, and they'll be company for each other uh-huh. while we're gone. <laughs> And it didn't last very long, because as I remember, they fought tooth and nail. I think I still have the scar on my upper thigh to prove that they did, and I, when I got in between one time. And uh, they pushed each other's buttons and made each other extreme. And we did rehome one. Good. Well, at least your and, family uh, was wise enough to see that. But there were some, not, I mean, horrible fights. Yeah. The two boys. And that's probably... Our number two reason why we don't like it is because they tend to fight, especially girls. Yeah. Neutered boys often can work out a piece, or if they have squabbles, it's not as dramatic. But sisters, well, my sister and I got along real good, I think, because we knew we could pick up my brother in between <laughs> us, and we ganged up on him. But as sisters often squabble. Oh, you and your sister squabble. Oh, yeah. I remember so- that. I mean, close, a couple years apart. Yeah, yeah. I can remember a few times when you weren't happy with her at all. (laughs) (laughs) But two female dogs, well, as one of my favorite saying, there's a reason why they call bitches bitches. Very true. And often the fights are really serious. But our number one reason is your big thing, bonding. Yes. That whole concept of we'll get two so they can keep each other company Who's going to be, what thing, what living thing is going to be most important to them, but their sibling. Even if they do fight or not, Mm -hmm. it's still going to be the most important interactions they have. And that's not what I want. I want a companion for me. So I want them to pay attention to me. I want them to love their other puppy dogs in the house. Sure. But I want to be the center of their universe. I'm just selfish that way. Uh, I feed and take care of them. And we see it a lot when either in puppy class or basic... How they're so in tuned of watching each other. Yeah. They don't care who's on the other end of that leash. They don't care. Frustrates the owners. Much harder to teach mm-hmm. when they really don't care what you think about them. Mm-hmm. And then when you start, if you need to separate them, oh my gosh. Well, yeah. I've been talking to a family. They're going to be bringing the dogs to training class with us. But they adopted two three-year-old German Shepherd sisters that the shelter or rescue, I don't know which they came from, said, do not separate them. And so my advice to them before they started class was start separating them. One goes for a walk and one stays home. One goes for a ride in the car and one stays home. Alternate it. One's inside, one outside. But the dogs are three years old now and never been separated. And this is going really, really hard. The one who's left behind is throwing a temper tantrum, can't think, is frantic. The one who goes is happy. Ha, I got to go for a ride in the car. But the one left at home is totally frantic. And uh, Separation anxiety is a hard enough problem, period. But when it's separation from a sibling that you've been with for years. Since you've been born, yeah, yeah. It's it's really difficult. And my husband and I had something similar, because German Shepherds are totally known for their separation anxiety. But our dogs were a year apart in age. They weren't from the same litter, weren't even from the same breeding. But we did everything together. We did obedience training together, my husband and I and the two dogs. We went for walks together. The dogs were home alone when we were working. And then we lost one at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. And we almost lost the, the younger dog for grieving. And actually, we didn't bring him back until we brought home our first Aussie. I mean, I thought Michi was going to lay down in the backyard and just die out of grief. And he didn't care that we were there. It was because Watashi wasn't there. I think that's a part a lot of people don't think about. You know, they think about the beginning. They have friends. They keep each other company, even when everyone's gone to school and work. But they don't think about what if one of them gets critically ill. Mm -hmm. What if one doesn't come back from the vet? Yeah. That type of thing. Yep. And that's sad. It's heartbreaking for the second one. Yeah. They almost become one. I'm getting this analogy of planting two trees side by side too close together. Right. It's one is, mm-hmm. well, then as they grow, they become intertwined and interdependent. But that also means that one gets stunted. Yes. 
yeah. in some way. And we've seen that with puppies in class, too, or, or had people call us. Well, this one's the bossy one. Yeah. This is the one that's always in charge. This one steals the food. This one takes all the toys. And then, for lack of a better term, the lesser puppy, the one who's being picked on or bullied or whatever, becomes more fearful, even if he wasn't born with that temperament, becomes more fearful or shy or reactive or, or unfortunately, potentially fearfully aggressive. Mm-hmm. Because everything's always taken from him. And we've, we've seen too many of those recently. Mm-hmm. It's just not, there's not enough good things about it to make it worthwhile to, to do that. Now, a friend of ours went to the breeder, came home with two puppies. Yeah. She was only intending to get one, or so she said. Uh-huh. <laughs> came back with two and was saying from the very beginning, oh, I'm only going to keep one. I'm just not sure which one, blah, blah, blah. And of course, I ended up with the other one, which I still think was part of the plan from the very beginning. (laughs) But it's okay. He's a good boy. And I I chose to go along with it. But yeah, and who knows if the breeder's sob story about I must find homes for these last two puppies is true or just a sales tactic. Well, we had one one of our helpers, remember, when he got his uh, two dogs. Oh, yeah. Different litters. They weren't yeah. litter mates, but they were same age, or no, a month, two months apart, yeah. same breeder, mm. and the breeder talked him into taking two. Mm. It's yeah. like, just say no to drugs or extra puppies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just say no. Mm-hmm. Now Raising that, a puppy is hard enough. Doubling it, it doesn't just double, it triples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they egg each other on. <laughs> if one puppy tears up part of one pillow... Two puppies will tear up three pillows. Oh, yeah. Given the opportunity. Well, and, and just think about house training with two. Oh, I mean, yeah. no way. Horrid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, another excuse that we've heard and, and we've seen in class is I have two kids, therefore, and each of them wants their own puppy, so therefore I will get two. I mm. mean, really horror story. <laughs> I mean, every parent knows, you know, you get a puppy right for the child. Who does all the work? Oh, it's yeah. not the kid. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's it's an excuse. I know I And besides, we had one in a family in class that I talked to not more than two or three weeks ago. Son, early teenager, probably 12, 13, got a new puppy. All right, in five years, that kid's going to be leaving home. Mm-hmm. He's going to be going to college or in the military or something. And that puppy's only going to be five years old. Well, even worse than that. What, what happens turn, then? Well, when they turn 16, they get a driver's license. <laughs> yeah. Now they're independent. Mm-hmm. You really think he's going to stay home with the puppy? And they're and active the in high school and football yep. games and all this other stuff. And this was supposed to be mm-hmm. his puppy, supposedly to teach him responsibility. Right. Or whatever. And never happened. Now the puppy's home alone. Or if you got two puppies, you got two kids, they're both getting active, and two puppies home alone. Mm-hmm. And no, they're not amusing each other. So <laughs> They're egging each other on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just, just not a good idea. Having two adult dogs who are well-behaved already is not twice the effort. It's twice the feeding costs, twice I, the veterinary bills. I'm a firm advocate of... Not having just one dog. Mm -hmm. I think dogs are happier when there's another dog in the household. And for me, having an older dog, a middle-aged dog, and a young dog is is wonderful because there's always one moving up. (laughs) Right. And I really like that. And it's nice to have an age gap, three, four years in between each dog Then the chances of you losing an old dog, your two old dogs at the same time, is decreased. I mean, accidents can happen. They can get sick. But chances are you're going to lose your old dog and and you'll have some time. But the nice thing with the age gap is then your two older ones or your one older one is grown up, well-trained, knows the rules of the house, knows what is expected of him. And then he can help you teach the puppy. Mm -hmm. We've been using the whole (laughs) parents Mm -hmm. of puppy dogs rather than owners or masters or leaders of the pack. Right. Your parents. Parents. And so having an older dog who is balanced, knows the rules, it's like having a co-parenter. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean... To bring them up. My puppy right now, Cisco. Kate and I were talking 
earlier that he's hit adolescence big time. <laughs> and he's not being a bad puppy. He's not chewing up the house. He's not doing a lot of things. But he's definitely an adolescent. And he's trying to be a little more protective around the house, which I tell him, you know, back off. Everything's fine. When you hear a doorbell on TV, doesn't mean you need to erupt. Uh, there's one particular commercial that bugs him. <laughs> He's playing a little too rough with your puppy, with Kate's puppy. He, but you notice when he did it this afternoon, both my adult female and your adult male yeah. went over there and stood over them. Yes. Hmm, I, which one are we going to kill? Playground supervisor. Mm-hmm. I'll take this one. You take out that right. one. So anyway, he's he's being a really pushy adolescent. Not a bad one, but a pushy one. But having Bashir be five years older, Bashir doesn't let him get away with much. I mean, he really doesn't. And Cisco spends quite a bit of time on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and Bashir enforces the, hey, this is the way it is. And I can't imagine raising that smart, driven, working lines Aussie without Bashir's help. (laughs) No, or how about uh, times two? Yeah. Have two like that. No, no way. No No way. No Mm -hmm. way. No. So, yeah, I think the children rationale, now granted, I have to say I've only been a stepmother and I haven't raised children myself, but isn't one of the goals of raising children teaching them to share? You know, let's have one puppy and have the kids share the puppy. And that means share the work, share the exercise, share the pooper scooping in the backyard. They can both share the responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one that we touched on a little bit, but I think is, is a big one, is we see a lot of the rescue mentality, too. And I know rescue groups, purebred rescue groups, or just plain dog rescue groups, and the shelters work really, really, really hard to save as many lives as they can. But I think guilting people into taking two is wrong. We want them to have forever homes. Yes. Now, we had an interesting couple of last month where grown woman and her older mother Oh, right. got puppies Mm -hmm. living in the... The mother had come to live with them, right? Mm -hmm, Right. uh, So getting on in age and so... When the daughter, who is now the adult in the family, went to get a puppy, mom came along and fell in love with another puppy. Right. And there's just totally wrong for her. She yes. Could, she could not walk without help. No. No. And now she has a puppy. And it was a Border Collie mix, right? Oh, yes. I mean, talk about high energy. Totally the wrong choice. And so it caused much distress and grief. They did finally rehome. But successfully, right. they dogs. waited so long, and it became harder and harder, and yeah. there were more and more fights, and more and, and family, more distress, family disagreements with all the members of the family. Which one to keep? Which one? Yeah, to yeah and that kind of opens a whole different thing. I mean, people go out to get dogs for the kids, you know, one for each child. Nowadays, with the cost of living and so many people out of jobs, families are living together. Mm-hmm. And that now opens where your parents want to get a dog because they like the litter because you're getting one. And now, even though you have two sets of adults in the household, you also have litter mates again. They've mm-hmm. almost gone back to reversing the roles of parent and child now. And uh-huh. so, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. you can't. It's hard yeah. enough to it's hard enough to raise one puppy successfully. I mean, it's a joy, but it's work. Yeah, it is. All right, well, so we told you all the reasons why we think this is wrong. We're going to need to take a break for our sponsors, and when we get back, let's talk about what to do if you've already got to, if you've already made this decision and now found out that maybe it wasn't the best choice. Maybe you're already having some problems, or maybe you just brought home two uh, last weekend and you're going, listening to us, you're going, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. So... (laughs) Take a listen to our sponsors. We'll be right back, and we'll talk about some options. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. 
and you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PETMEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash world, W-O-R-L-D, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. How would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20-second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit PetLifeRadio.com. Click on Sponsorship Information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed or email us at PetLifeRadio.com. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake here with my sidekick, Super Smiley. <laughs> the giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. You're listening to Pet Life Radio, and I'd like to tell you about our brand new show, A Super Smiley Adventure. Our show explores adventures with animals. They can be traveling, out in the world trips, or inner journeys where our animals lead us to inspiration and self-discovery, or just plain fun adventures. Join us here on Pet Life Radio on A Super Smiley Adventure. <laughs> Good boy. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. We know you're begging for more. So back to it's a doggy dog world with your fetching hosts Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. So the first half of the show, unfortunately, was pretty negative. And granted, in most of our our podcasts, we do try to keep it a little upbeat. But this particular subject, getting two puppies at the same mm-hmm. time, is we deal with so many of the problem issues in our training classes. And Kate with private training and myself with behavior consults. It's hard for us to, to dredge up a... A positive aspect to this. And it, it seems to be increasing. And that's yes. what really yeah, concerns is. me. Right. At and, least in our area. Yeah. 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 And, and far too many rescue, shelter, and breeders urging people to take two. So we don't see any positive in it. But if you've already got two, let's take a look at some of the things that can happen and what you can do about it. First of all, we mentioned at the beginning of the show, fighting. Siblings often fight. So I'd be careful on what... I think our number one thing is when we have two pups come in, you can tell it's the same litter, and then we say, sexes are two females. Mm -hmm. And we know that never turns out well. Like you said earlier, the parts are bad as they get older. Yeah. Male and female seem to work out better, but what I always notice is as they're getting older, the male is more relying on the female. She's very independent, can when you're out there in the yard, train and, and can focus on the owner. And the male is just like, oh, my God, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? I can't do anything without her. Well, the female tends to be the bossy one. Right. And that's what you need to do, though, is practice with them. They need to practice being separated. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that it's not a great big shock if you do rehome one or if one gets ill. And that's got to start with crate training them separately. Start yeah. day one. Start from day Very one. Beginning. Crate training them separately. Well, and they cry at night in individual crates. They've got to be separated. Yeah. And if you got two puppies for two kids, then they go one puppy's in a crate with one child and the other's in a crate in the other bedroom with another child. Mm-hmm. But crate them separately. Start them separately. Or if you don't have kids and you ended up getting two, one on one side of the bed and one on the other, separate them. Mm-hmm. And that goes along with different play times, different walks. Don't do the mistake my husband and I made. And, you know, we looked at it. Well, my husband and I were very young at the time, newlyweds, as a matter of fact. And we both enjoyed working with our dogs. And we said, wow, this is something we can do together. So we took the dogs for walks together, went to training classes together, practiced together, did search and rescue work together did everything together. Yes, it was great for my husband and I, but it was so wrong for the dogs. It was totally wrong. But that doesn't mean you can't do anything together. Just make sure they also have time apart. 
Take one to a training class on Monday and one to a training class on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. We had one set that I don't think they knew their individual names. Right. You know, they were always called at the same time or puppy. And so they both responded. They didn't have any sense of individuality. Yeah. And that's not for, that doesn't make a confident dog, whether it, they're with their puppy sibling or not. Mm-hmm. You need to learn to stand on your own four feet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two feet to be a complete grown-up. Playtimes, too. Play with them. Well, with my three now, even though there's a difference in age, if I'm going to do some trick training or play the muffin tin tennis ball game or bring out one of the Nita Otteson toys, two dogs will go outside. One stays inside. We play the game. I rotate the dogs. Another one comes in. And that way, each of the three dogs get some individual attention from me at each session. Mm-hmm. And they love it. It's good for them. And they get, I get to be the center of attention. Yeah, well, and it's exactly. all part of the bonding. If you want your dog to listen to you mm-hmm. without having to beat them over the head with a two-by-four, then there's, you've got to be a positive force in their life. Mm-hmm. And the giver of food and the giver right. of good things and the, one of the playtime people. It makes me think of my mother. My, <laughs> How does that I, turn into your mother? Hang, 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 hang with me for a minute. My mother and her brother were fraternal twins. Oh, oh okay. And I, I know it's in psychology books all over, but up until a certain age, they only talked to each other in their own language. Right. That was one of the right. family stories. Oh. Right. And it's more common in yeah. identical twins, but it also happens in fraternal twins. Yeah. So um, I think up until the age they started school. And at the school, whoever, small town, but they separated them at school, in grade school. And that's the recommended now, I believe, from most experts on twins is don't make them wear the same clothes. Don't make them go to the same Mm -hmm. classrooms. Let them develop some individuality. And two puppies from the same litter is certainly the same thing. And I think it was Mm -hmm. just down-home the common sense smarts that one of the teachers said, well, they're going to have to learn to speak to the rest of the world. So let's stop them only talking to each other. Smart teacher. And put them in separate classrooms. Yeah, smart teacher. So they always had a bond. Of yeah. course, siblings do, period. But mm-hmm. um, You know you have the weirdest stories I about do, your family, don't I? all these dog stories. <laughs> yeah, well, if your family tree don't have too many branches. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, another issue with raising puppies, and is just as important, if not more important, for two puppies from the same litter, socializing them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And don't consider just the other puppy socialization, and don't consider just the dogs at home socialization but get them elsewhere to socialize them and apart. We could do a whole thing on just what socialization means. Well, maybe that should be an upcoming podcast. We've but, talked about it before, but we could talk about it again. You know, too often they think, oh, well, he's been with the neighbor's dog mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Or he knows my family. He knows my family. So he knows he's my been neighbors. Around, the dogs been around. around people. Yeah. But I want to start adding the word novelty more to socialization. Mm-hmm. It's all about exposing your pup to novel things Mm -hmm. sounds and people and other dogs and so forth and if you got two they fall into a pattern of how they react to every novelty i can put a plug for a book that has an excellent section on socialization called puppy love by pray tell by by (laughs) liz palaika (laughs) liz palaika she's written several books yeah she she has and i think she got a really good section in that book called puppy love (laughs) And it's a beautiful book, too. It lots is. Lots of photos. Awesome And photos. I, I have to admit, I did not use the term novel. I think that's a good one. But I think I said new. And I listed all kinds of stuff. Well, I'll give a nod to Temple Grandin. Yes. Because I've been rereading Animals in Translation. Uh-huh. And, that's um, worthy of rereading every few years. It is. And she's talking about the seeking, mainly about zoo animals and livestock mm-hmm. and so forth. But... It's the novelty, and it just clicked with me this on this reread. About your mom again? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. About puppy classes, and we bring out objects that the puppies might be fearful of right, so that right. the owners get a chance to practice how to do it. Right. And I'm always stressing, do not drag. So forced mm-hmm. novelty pushes most creatures into fear, but curiosity will lead most creatures to it. Uh, check out a novelty right and then build confidence if it's successful 
So, for example, in puppy class, here in Southern California, a lot of puppies are not used to umbrellas. Well, scary things. Yeah. Whereas in Seattle, every puppy knows what an umbrella is. <laughs> but doesn't know what sunglasses, sunglasses are. <laughs> so You guys have been listening in my classes. <laughs> so, umbrella out, puppy sees it open and close from a distance, and then when it gets closer, upend it. And you throw a handful of treats in it. And the puppy gets, oh, to get the treats, I have to go. And they walk on it. And all of a sudden, the fear has gone. Ah, no big deal. And the owner parrot gets to go, hey, look at this. It, it and works. throw the treats. And praise yeah. them for being curiously bold. Right. Right. So that next time when they say, really, it's okay, check it out, the puppy will tend to believe them and say, yeah. okay. When I brought Cisco from uh, Arizona, oh. he had the first puppy class. He had no idea what an umbrella was. Thought that was something that would mm-hmm. suck puppies up and eat them. <laughs> now he's so casual about them, it's like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. no problem. <laughs> no, Cisco didn't even know what dogs with tails were. No, no. all he knew were... That tails. was unusual yes. for him. Yes, he was worried about tails. Mm-hmm. You have something attached to your butt! <laughs> <laughs> That's why he always liked my Roddy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so back to... Two puppies together as we jaunt it off there. But each puppy needs to learn how to deal with novelty, how to deal with fear, how to do all of that on their own. Because they won't always be going through life shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip. Right. And they can't be a complete personality unless they do so. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, make that bond with people. So what happens if you have two puppies and you're having problems? You know, so many of us say... I get a dog for a lifetime. I don't get a dog to give it away. I don't get a dog to give up. Now, my husband and I have always done that. I can only think of two, in all the years we were married and and after his passing, I can only think of two times we gave up a dog. One dog, I just simply couldn't deal with. His personality and mine just totally clashed. But I found him a working dog home and he became a drug detection dog for a local police department until he retired and passed away. I felt horrible giving that dog up. I felt like it was a failure, a bad trainer, a bad owner. But I had to come to the decision that his personality and mine just clashed. Well, I remember you saying, I just don't like him. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he got a new home. After Paul's passing, his service dog, Archer, I could not make him happy. He's in a new home, and he's thrilled, and he's doing therapy dog work, and he's thriving. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not always bad to give up a dog, Mm -mm. especially if you can find him a new home or get him in a situation where he can get a good home. And I think that's the hardest decision for people who get two puppies is, but I got two puppies, so they're my family now, and I'm attached to them. I can't give them up or one of them up. Back to those two puppies. uh, I was an emotional teenager. We can't separate them. They're brothers. They're part of our family. Yeah. And one of them we called Herbie because he was a love bug. (laughs) Remember that one? Remember that movie? Yeah, we even had a Volkswagen. Um, Oh, Herbie. (laughs) And he was the more uh, emotional one. He was the sweet. He was the more hound. And the other one was Ching, and he was very proper. And Ching. Ching, named after a Chinese, don't, Chinese poet. Don't ask okay. me how we got that. They were mixes. Ching and Herbie. All right, I'll, I'll fully confess here. They were mixes between beagles and Pekingeses. Oh. A beagle Pekingese mix. Oh, my God. And Herbie was more a beagle. A beagle. <laughs> I used to tell people they were beagle knees. <laughs> and do you know, I said that, I got oh, to saying that with God. such a straight face that I'd have people say, oh, I hear they're very rare. Was there one at Westminster this year? <laughs> oh, and I'd say, no. yes, yes, in their own division. Anyway, um, <laughs> one was very beagle-like. Oh. That was Herbie the Love Bug, and Ching was more uh, restrained. We ended up easily finding a home for Herbie. Crushed, I'm sure I sobbed in my pillow for days. But I really came to appreciate Ching and what a wonderful dog he was. And I have very fond memories of him. Yeah, you've talked about him. He's a great dog. One of the yeah. smartest dogs I've ever known. And without, but he was 
in danger of being the weaker sapling overshadowed by this brother. By his extrovert. If if we had not separated them. And it was the best thing for both Herbie. He had a great life out on Acres playing with a family. with They had three boys and oh, one dog. Go. And they yeah. all shared him. And yeah. he had a great time. Yeah. And Ching stayed with us. And, and, and I really appreciated him. Sure. Yeah. So he got to grow to his full potential. So did Herbie. It was the best thing. I did used to be part of that. No, wild geese mate for life, and once you've taken on a dog, that's it. And I don't think that's always the best decision for the dog. Exactly. And and, and for the family. If the two puppies are having problems, whether they're fighting or one is bullying the other or they're not learning house training or they're refusing training, that's a terrible stress on the owners, too. I mean, yes, it's horrible for the puppies, but it's also a horrible stress on the family. And at some point, people are going to start disliking those dogs, if not hating them, because it's such a convoluted, complicated, horrible mess. Well, Mm -hmm. the other problem that I know we run into class is if they've got dogs that are starting to fight... And dogs grow up faster than children. Mm-hmm. And you got the dogs for each child. Now you've got the child involved. The dogs are fighting. And now you're risking not just the dogs getting injured in a vet bill, the children. Oh, yes. Getting injured. Sure. Or and bit or trying to break it up and, you know, and get their hurt. hands. In, yep. Physically hurt. And, and psychologically. I've got, the, yeah. I got the, the yeah. scar on my thigh. Yeah. But then mm-hmm. psychologically. Psychologically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just so many issues here. So... Anyway, sorry to have such a a downbeat podcast for you, but hopefully we've provided some information. If you're thinking about getting a puppy at this time, please take us seriously. Just get one. Don't let the shelter or rescue people or breeder talk you into another one because he needs a home. There are other people looking for puppies, and, and if there's another puppy that needs a home, start networking with your friends and your family. Not that live with you. But live separately from you. And perhaps you can help find that puppy a home. But don't feel that you have to save them all. None of us can save them all. And we have families, a couple, that had, they each got a puppy from a litter, Mm -hmm. but live in separate households. Sure. And they're, um, what, mom and dad and daughter and husband or something like that. Sure. And they have play dates. Yeah. With their litter mates, they have play dates. Mm, Yeah. And that works out great. That's yep. nice, because the puppies still get to grow freely. Mm-hmm. Right. And bond with their yeah. people. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. get together and play with but an age-appropriate playmate. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that works out. If you have two puppies from the same litter and you're having problems with them right now, talk to a trainer or behaviorist in your area who's familiar with the issues. Get some help. Talk among the family. <laughs> and... Don't feel guilty if the best thing for all of you is to rehome the puppy. It's hard not to feel guilty. You know, those of us who love dogs want to keep them for their lifetime. But um, do what's best for all of you, the puppies and the family. All right. So our next podcast is going to be much more cheerful. and, And we'll probably hit on socialization coming up again, too, because that's one that we can't talk about enough. So thanks for tuning in, and we hope you listen to us next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. (laughs) Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.